Girls is a women's only choir at the high school. It does have girls in 9th, 10th, 11th, and 12th grade. It is an audition to only group, so we do sing um, pretty challenging music and move at a much faster pace than say we do in concert choir or women's ensemble. In terms of Rocky, I mean, I've known her since I was in fourth grade honors chorus. It's amazing from day one. She's definitely intense. I would never say anything she does to us is easy. Yes. <laughs> she's serious about what she's doing and I think she does an amazing job. Um <laughs> so I feel like the Nightingales have been um, slowly building over time. The Nightingales have been invited to perform at Carnegie Hall in New York City. Um, in collaboration with five other high schools and Dr. Peggy Detweiler from Mansfield University to present a concert based on women's music, women composers, women poets, um, women lyricists. Can I just hear the very opening chord? Rachel will start from the beginning. We're going to sing, come, and we're going to hold it. I want you to look at yourself and make sure you have that pucker, <coughs> openness, soft palate lifted, all that stuff you have to do, but look at yourself and see if it's there. Go ahead, Rachel. The Carnegie Hall invitation really came from two years ago when the Nightingale sang at the state conference in Erie, Pennsylvania. Dr. Detweiler, again the uh, professor who is organizing Carnegie Hall, heard us sing. And she extended the invitation to our group to join her at Carnegie Hall. Great opener, isn't it? Like it's so sparkly and wonderful and great. Um, I just tweeted and Instagram a picture of Carnegie Hall while you're at lunch. Look at it. And I guarantee, when you're my age, you'll be like talking to your kids or your friends and be like, I sang at Carnegie Hall when I was in high school. It's a big deal. So you need to think when you're singing this cummy makers, like how great to sing, celebrate, celebrate this triumphant day. I love the song's message, how it's just all about like togetherness and singing with your sisters and um, that means a lot to me because when I'm in Nightingales, I just feel like I'm with a, a separate family and we all just get along so well and we all share like the same passion for music and singing together and well, this are going to be unbroken. It's just like, hits a spot in me. 41, 41, ready and sing! Yeah. Unbroken. Um, so when I introduce this piece to the students, and I do this for everything, I like to give the background of, of the piece and uh, try to get them to understand what, what this music stood for or what it meant to the composer and the people who first performed it. So especially Will the Circle Be Unbroken, um, it was, it, it's a folk song that women sang years ago. We talk a lot about female power and, and sisterhood and um, just, just being there for each other. And I think that really resonated with the girls. And of course, when you add the hand holding, oh my goodness. Um, so, I don't know, it just all worked. And the piece itself is just wonderful. The harmonies are beautiful. Um, yeah, that, I'm glad that that's become the anthem of the Nightingales.
1941 by Andrea Ramsey. Um, we actually Skyped with Andrea and I asked her some information about 1941 because in the music itself it says Shirley Eberth, um, the author of the text. Uh, she was in some random used bookstore and found this little book of poetry and opened it up and stumbled upon this poem, 1941. Did she write from her own experience? Was she a mother whose son went to fight in World War II? We don't really know. What if our dreams were you came home safe and now you're married and now you have children and now that woman has grandchildren, right? So maybe you allow yourself to visit that fantasy, it really is a fantasy because your son is gone, but maybe you allow yourself to do that just for a little bit, but then you're back to reality. So just imagining can truly change the sound of the tone of your voice. And though you stand in jungle mud, and though you stand in jungle mud, We work so hard on our vocal technique and what we do with our instruments to have a free, mature, rich sound. So I think our overall sound is quite impressive from high school students, from teenage women. Um, and I think also our attention to detail. We strive to sing everything very musically and to do what the composer has put down on her or his music, we try to do to the best of our ability. It got a little, like, little girlish, and I think it's okay, right? You're, um, you're being vulnerable at that moment. You're allowing yourself to pretend that you still have your sense. You're very vulnerable at that moment. That's one cool camera. Thanks. It's gonna happen. We're gonna have a great trip. We're not gonna suffer. It's gonna be great. Until Dennis Riker says bye, he's coming up right now. Yeah, oh! Yeah, he's coming. What? Is this real life? I just, these people that I work with are just so fantastic. I want you to have a fantastic time. I'm glad we were able to get up there and ready to go. But here's what I need I need something this morning. I had to leave right before you performed the other night. So I need 30 seconds of something. Mr. Davis behaves and bring him back. I need him, all right? Thank you! I'm not the best singer personally, but I love playing piano and I feel like every little note I play fits in perfectly with the vocals and I think it's really neat to add something special to the singing and to kind of complete the picture of what the writer of the piece is wanted. When I'm super nervous, if I can really feel the ground under my feet, it makes me feel a lot more solid. Don't forget everything that you know how to do because you're nervous because you're singing in front of a lot of people in a really world famous stage. Yeah. Okay, I just want to say you guys have no idea how much you all mean to me. I love you all so much and we've all worked so hard for this that we deserve this in every single way. One, because we have the best choir teacher ever. <laughs> because we all respect each other and we all love each other so much. And I just think that's amazing. Group hugs! <laughs>
onto the stage of Carnegie Hall, I think, was one of um, the most amazing moments of my teaching career. cut off the girls and the sound just echoed. We all kind of just looked at each other as the sound vibrated through Carnegie Hall. So last May, um, Nightingales worked really hard to create a great recording of three different pieces. And I then submitted them to Pennsylvania Music Educators Association, PMEA. One, two, three. Two, T, four. One, two, T. And now we're getting ready for PMEA, and that'll be in the next week. T, four. One, two, T, four. One, a two. We're about to get to that peak, so I'm glad we haven't hit our highest spot yet because I'm hoping that we'll be at peak. One, two, three, three. She lived in like 1098 or something and that was a time when not a lot of women knew how to read. Um, they were educated, they were expected to raise a family which is all well and good but they were not given the chance to educate themselves. Ave Generosa um, is actually one of her more popular texts because it has a lot of different Latin words in it. I know from being a teacher for so long that students want to be challenged and you know I, I could pick out easy music but uh, music music from these really great composers once you get it it's just it's just spectacular no more oh my gosh what's happening that's over this should be a hundred percent solid in your being do you have room Maybe. <laughs> to Erie, I was like, this is it, this is the best group member we're going to have, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, well, no, no, we can still do more. seeing how we've grown way like, closer together. Some of my best friends are Nightingales and it's really exciting that I got to spend all this time with them. Nightingales has inspired me to major in music education because it made me the person that I am today. It really brought me out of my shell like, in a good way and I want to be able to do that for other kids. This is gonna be a great video. <laughs> Ew! <laughs> it sounded like a squid bird or something. The American Choral Directors Associate, Associate, <laughs> uh, which is the Pennsylvania Music Educators Associate. Associ <laughs> I can't say association. <laughs>